Hello and welcome to Magrathia Builder Worlds. This is a Judge Dread Miniatures game build. Yes, it is. Um, all right, so it's been, uh, it's been a little while since I've, I've uh, made some Judge Dread stuff. I started off the, the beginning of this year really very well uh, with a number of Judge Dread builds, of which are behind me. We'll have a look in a minute. Uh, and then I got lost in getting stuff ready for Sloot and various other bits and pieces, and a Patreon build too. So, uh, Patreon, what's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want to support my channel at Patreon, uh, go to uh, patreon.com slash worlds. Just had a competition. Uh, winners will be, the winner will be announced uh, a bit later, but not in this video. Um, and uh, um, yeah, I really got into my dread stuff, and I started kind of like making bits and pieces. I was very excited, and then yeah, everything ground to halt because we had a project for being for a B and B project to sort out for um, salute. As I said, uh, uh, but now I'm back on it. I've got a few things that I want to uh, uh, get on and build. So I want to make these videos, well, for a number of reasons. First of all, I've got a ton of ideas still running around inside my head, a big project I want to get on with. And secondly, because uh, I suppose I ought to thank the sponsor of this video, uh, the very excellent Warlord Games, the manufacturers, no less, of uh, Just Dread the Miniatures Go. Um, obviously, by the stuff that I was doing, uh, again, garnered some attention, and uh, people at Warlord like what they're doing, and hoping I'd make a few more uh, Dread videos. So here we are. Um, Although I wouldn't be making them had not anybody from Warlord got in contact with me because I was having so much fun doing it. Uh, but we are going to uh, make some uh, more Dread stuff in the next little while. It's going to be a bit weird now because I'm getting in, we're heading into the summer. This is uh, middle of May, this video is being made in. And um, I'm about to get all piratey for work. Um, and it gets a bit bonkers. But uh, certainly the yeah, back end of May, very busy. And then, yeah, so... Uh, videos are going to be a bit sporadic. I'm going to try and make sure that I'm. I'm, I'm even going to try maybe and put out some slightly shorter videos a bit more often rather than saving them up till I've got a massive video I have to edit. Who knows? It might work. Um, where are we? Okay. So what we've done so far? Quick reminder. Uh, I have uh, done two or three videos uh, about uh, making stuff for Just Dread. One was about half blocks. Uh, which are over here, these are kind of still in progress. One was about uh, the making of Doodles Noodles, uh, the noodle bar, which is down here, and one was about making this rather splendid water feature I'm still rather in love with. Come and have a closer look. Okay, so first of all, if you remember, my hat blocks that I'm building are based on these really cool draw units uh, from home base. To be honest, there wouldn't be much as draw units from that point of view. You could possibly store your socks in them. Yeah, bundled up nice and neatly, old balls of wool, but I wouldn't store, want to store much in them. But they are making excellent basis for uh, bits of my uh, hab units in the hive. Um, I'm trying to uh, build, I want to build an interior uh, uh, table as much as I can rather than outside one, a wasteland one and that kind of thing. I'm not really interested in that. I want the inside of, of blocks. Blocks are enormous. Um, if you can think of the largest shopping centre you've been in, um, you know, then the shop uh, there's a shopping mall. The block then should be a kilometre of stuff on top of that. It should just be absolutely vast. Um, so I want some interior uh, um, locations to play games in, which, which is what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, new Doodles Noodles, one of those fast food joints in the middle of a plaza. Uh, and then down here, of course, was my um, water feature, which I made last time out doing Just Dread videos. You can check out all of these. It's very happy with this, with the pool of water and the plants and the, the uh, um, waterfall here and stuff like that. So I want, I want to add more stuff to this. Um, actually, I'll, let's just have a look at the board itself. Hang on. Oh, there are loads of cool ways you can place Judge Dread. Uh, the rule book, is, book itself is mostly got. Um, when he's got game pictures in it, he's just trying to find some because right now it's a great rule book. It's actually, if you've got a minute, it's a very good system. This I really like this uh, system that uh, Rebellion and Warlord games have made between them. Um, it's versatile, it's a great skirmish system. I like some of the mechanics in it, uh, especially the little counters that you pull and allow you to keep going and, and, and that kind of thing. Do check it out. It's also pretty much the same system that Warlord have used for, let's have a think, their Strontium Dog game. Fans of uh, 2000 AD will know Strontium Dog. And also Slain, I believe, and also uh, ABC Warriors, which has come out recently too. Um, but, you know, for me, all of those games, I always loved Strontium Dog when I was a kid. That was a, a comic strip, it was great. Johnny Alpha and Wolf and uh, that kind of thing. 
excellent, but yeah, I don't see as much mileage in it in the same way. And the same thing with ABC Warriors. Uh, I really like the look of the models. I love the ABC Warriors. Joe Pineapples and uh, Colonel Blackblood were two of my favourites. Um, but uh, Dread, for me, is where it's at. Unless, of course, they go one step further and make Rogue One the tabletop game. Not Rogue One, fucker. <laughs> Oops, just mashed up my franchises. Unless, of course, they go one further and make Rogue Trooper, Rogue Trooper, yes, uh, uh, a game system as well. They could do that really well. Although, I'm, I, I think you'd struggle, really, because almost everybody would want to play the GIs and not play the Norths or the Southers. But um, anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, in here, whenever you see uh, games, what I've avoided doing mostly in here is is showing many game pictures. There are some, uh, but they've mostly used images from the cartoons. And a lot of the time when they do get them, they're kind of like street scene -y kind of things. They're nice, they're cool. But I like this idea, like I said, of interior stuff. Um, lots of people play street scene -y stuff. <sighs> sometimes they make purpose-built baseboards. And sometimes uh, the easiest solution these days is to get one of those roll-out neoprene mats. I've used them for other game systems. Uh, certainly for my water-based stuff, Ben Fliot and Carnivale, Carnivale, when I get around to that, is probably going to be based on that as well. But this, again, I want it to look like shopping mall. Um, and then conveniently, um, the problem with that is the fact that the problem with, with having purpose-made boards for any one game is storage and expense. Uh, and then one day, I was in Ikea, and I came across these beggars. White, thick, solid shelf units to go in in different units um i bought four this one uh is uh what's this 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 one is about it's under 60 centimeters long and that's what about oh i don't know i could get a tape measure out couldn't i so let's have a look oh i could get the label out uh, other swedish furniture manufacturers are available uh, this is called a gelp uh, and it's uh 40 centimeters uh, deep by uh, just under 60 centimeters wide, uh, and then I got so they got two of these, and they got two of. I mean, I've done these. These are the square ones, which are both also under 50 centimeters. So I can make a rectangular board now out of these cool white. Uh, um, what are they called? Shelves. How are these shelves? The purpose being that they are beautifully cut and finished and will fit together really nicely. I might even come up with a cunning way that I might be able to lock them together when they're playing, but to be honest, I don't really think I need to. But what it does is it gives me a really cool kind of like shopping mall floor kind of surface to play on. White and neat. It might end up getting a bit dirty, I don't know, but it'll be kind of cool. So, but um, I, I like it. It's a good solution, and, and four of them uh, cost, pff, I don't know, less than 25 quid or so, I think. Maybe less than 30 quid. Um, and then they uh, pack down and pack away really easily too. So that, that's my solution um, for a surface to play this game on. Now, okay, sharp Tim, and actually get on with today's build, would you? You said you're going to make short videos, and 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 uh, yeah, so far this doesn't look like it's going to be one. So what are we making this time? Okay, well, let me put this lot away, and then we'll talk about that. Now. Okay, so um, what are we going to build this time? Now look, it's all way ready to get on. Uh, well, uh, it depends how much you know about Mega City One, really, and the setting of Judge Dread. I'm an old school Judge Dread fan. Um, I was reading Dread in the eighties. Um, uh, I think was not I can't claim the right from the start, but pretty early on, I was reading Dread, and I've come gone back to force to it, and I absolutely love it. I mean, Dread is a game. One of the reasons why I like the idea of playing Judge Dread as a tabletop game is the vast, vast amount of source material that's out there. I mean, it's the same reason why you might play Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, I suppose. The buckets of a source material gives you so much scope. I don't fancy playing Cursed Earth games or various other bits and pieces. I want to stay inside Mega Z1. Um, and I want to develop at the moment this kind of like lower layer, level or two of my uh, um, city block. I did have a name for it. I can't remember what it is now. Um, it might be the Jimmy Kimmel block. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I thought would be neat was uh, actually have some 
other things apart from had blocks and shops and, and that kind of thing. So uh, what I fancied was having a, a railway station. Mega city blocks are joined together by uh, tween block plazas, big open uh, walkways in between blocks you can walk from one to another. Um, of course they have roads, megways and the like, and pedways, uh, pedways you walk on, but megways, the roads that you go around, and also many of the blocks are connected by sky rail. Zoom. Trains, kind of thing. Now that's going to be a lot of work, um, but but I was lucky enough some time ago to get one of the very last models uh, uh, in stock at Sally Forth. Sally Forth is a, another company I like, and Sally Forth, I don't think they make these anymore. Made these 28 millimeter. Anti grab trains. There's one, there's the front of one, um, and then there's there's a coach. I've got two of those and a back end. So I've got like a four, so I've got, I've got this train, I've got this train, it's cool. Um, they've got uh, underneath. They've got these cool bits here, which are clearly kind of like our uh, maglev kind of anti-gravity mm, kind of monorail -y kind of things, um, which are really nice. And at least, so these are going to get painted up. This is going to be my Zoom, uh, which is cool. Um, and then I thought, right, what that needs is um, uh, a station. Uh, and um, Sally Forth used to do bits and pieces for that as well, but uh, they stopped doing that range. Uh, which is really frustrating. I did get in contact with them. They did have a few bits left. Thank you very much, everybody at Sally Forth as well. Um, and and they said, I bought a bunch of stuff uh, that's going to be useful, including, because ages and ages ago, I bought an escalator, cut out MDF escalator with, with a resin escalator and, and acrylic bits. And I was lucky enough to get another one. And then I thought what I'd do is, what I need is railway tracks for these trains, or certainly a kind of um, monorail tube and thing and stuff and I thought well how am I going to achieve that so what I've got for that hang on I went to my local DIY store uh, and I picked up some of this stuff which is a uh, two metre square gutter what right? I don't know why it's called a square gutter because it's not bloody square um, it's got it's, you know it's open topped and it's kind of got one two three four five there's five five sides but it's quite neat. I'm hoping. Do you know what? I bought this ages ago. I haven't actually. What I haven't actually done with it yet is do this. Get this and get one of my units from the train to make sure it fits it. Oh yes, it does. Look, check that out. Now, um, I don't imagine the train sits in these things all the time. And anyway, what it needs to do is sit up here this high. Um, so this is going to need some jiggery pokery in it to actually make it sit there. But but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff to make the tunnels and the train track because what's cool about it this guttering is you can also get um, all the joints that would join bits together and that kind of thing so, ho so hopefully going to make some kind of doorways for the train to go out it's going to be neat you could also totally use this stuff for making uh, really cool modular sci-fi kind of scenery um, with all the corners and stuff you can make some really neat hab units and things for other games for Stargrave or Grave or Star Wars, I might even make some, use some for Star Wars and, and do a build for that, but um, right now I'm going to turn it into a train track. So I need this, I need the trains. Um, I think I'm going to be using more of the um, draw units from home base um, and clunk um, and also the uh, the escalators from Sally Forth too. So um, uh, all of that means that I'm going to be able to hopefully have this kind of like plaza end of the shopping centre with some escalators going up to uh, a zoom station and I'm, I'm going to have one, I'm only going to put one track in so you, know, you, you assume that you could go over another and there'll be one going the other way but it's a lot of faff um, and, and that way there we're going to be kind of cool which I'll then be able to use Warlord figures on uh, and which is, is pretty neat when well, I'm busy painting up the stuff that they did send me. Then when I've done that I am planning on going outside uh, and, and do some Megway stuff because apart from anything else um, I've got some nice uh, dread vehicles that I've been supplied with, hover vans and stuff uh, and, uh, and trucks and um, there we go, let's, have, let's get, oh, 
That's a, a dread hover. Car, it's quite the kind of nice, nice resin, really solid resin models, those from Warlord. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I'm definitely going to go outside and do that. But first, we're going to carry on with the shopping mall. So, without further ado, uh, and uh, we're going to. I said without further ado, but I haven't got a fucking clue what I'm going to do now. Mm, uh, uh, this is the bit, of course, where what I have to do is get out all the different things and then just start fiddling with it to see how it might go. It's not much of a plan, but it is a plan. Huh. Anyway, in the meantime, would you like to look around my new workshop? It's looking all right. Cut to that. I'm going to get some stuff out and have a bit of a fiddle. A workbench. With escalators. <sighs> Marvellous just doing artwork. <clears throat> Organised cack. Paints. More organised cack. That used to be relevant when I worked for somebody else. Now I work for myself, it means it's just me. Cupboard of shame. So deep we can't get into it. Cack boxes, craft boxes. Books, 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 booky books. More figure cases up there. Boogie book books, actual desk, work desk, used to belong to my mother, God bless her. Let's go over here, there's a random warming fighter. Nineteenth century watercolour by Jay Turner, just the wrong one. Moonstone figures painted by my mate Edward. Venezia. The old world. Well, a workshop map of the old of Middle Earth. My favourite album cover of all time. On a storyteller's night. Old school CD collection. My only 40k model. My Christmas advent calendar from last year. Rock on. And that's the new look. Magrathia Workshop Office. Couldn't it? I'm very happy. What I've found is sometimes is when I'm making a piece of scenery it can be based entirely just on, on, on the one thing that kind of kicks off a whole thing. Um, and in this case what happened was I, I discovered... Uh, the Sally Forth website and that dog, and they had these brilliant, brilliant escalator models. What's cool about them is they're a mix of uh, MDF. I'm stuck any of this together yet; it's all a bit flimsy. Uh, but then a resin component, which are kind of cool. Um, and then I, I was really taken by the acrylic cut sides, these have got uh, plastic on them to cover them up to, to so it will be a really neat bit of scenery to kind of work with um, so we all know I'm not a big fan of, of uh, laser cut MDF but I, I, again I see it as a, uh, a tool right um, it, I'm not interested in having tables made completely out of it but on the other hand I do see it as uh, um, uh, a way of, of helping do some things. If I was to make this set of escalators out of other materials, it would be really bloody fiddly and take flipping ages. Whereas actually what I've got is you get a resin base, or you've got, because I, sadly I don't think these are available anymore, um, 
which is a bit of a shame because I think they're really it's a really cracking model. Um, I suppose what's happened is that there just isn't enough call for uh, this kind of thing, or like a lot of other things, like my own uh, company issues, is that it's hard getting it out there to let people know that it exists. This model, then, right? Let's have a closer look. Let's zoom in down there. So, first of all, we get our laser cut MDF bits. Uh, it's going to be a floor panel. That has got. Uh, yeah, that has that alright. That's going to go on the floor. So, uh, our bottom of our escalator goes in there. I've really got to stick all some of this together soon. Um, So what's cool is it comes with an up and a down, or double escalators, which is really neat, and I hadn't even realised that when I first bought it, because um, it didn't look carefully at the model. Um, and then what's cool is you get this this resin base and these two uprights, which then slot into the top of, the bottom of the uh, escalator, I think. I've never actually fully assembled this, so I'm making this up as we're going along now. One, oh for God's sake, two, there we go. Um, and then you get the escalatory bits, which are just wicked, because they're like proper escalatory bits, uh, which I'm assuming go, well, they've got to go that way around. So they're going to sit in here, like that, somehow, which is kind of cool. Tell you what, let's turn this around this way. Okay, so here we go. After we've got uh, our, our stand, our legs, right, and and that's on there, and we we put in. Let's go back here and put in one of these. Uh, you then put in the acrylic bits on either side, um, and then you get these really. It's just a really cool escalator. It's like modelled with. It's got um, sides so that. Yep, yep. Figures could go up the escalators. You can see through the side. Let's zoom in on that. There we go. Look, little fella going up the escalators. That's wicked. Um, and it'll go on the other side. So we've got up and downs. Really, really cool. It's a really, really lovely model. This is exactly, as far as I'm concerned, what MDF is for. All these different components. It's a great model because this has got MDF, acrylic, resin, plastic tube. This is great. So, it's interesting because this this whole model has come out of the fact that I bought this one model first of all and then I lucked out because I went back to them sometime later and then I realised they'd all gone out of stock and I was like oh no and then I got hold of them and they were like oh no we've still got some so I bought some more I bought the other set I don't know if there's another set after that it's worth going back and getting the other set if if uh, yeah oh well if you get one it's cool I mean if I'm clever what I'll do is I won't attach this so I'll be able to move it around because then after after I'd made it up the first time and got it to this stage before it fell apart, imagine my delight when I got one of my hab units and I put it next to it and, oh my God, it's the perfect height. I mean, literally, there's a step up, right, from uh, from the escalator onto the, onto the top here, but it is the absolute perfect height. I could either lift that up a little so it was just kind of like another four mil higher, I could put it on a piece of foam board, for example, which I might do anyhow. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, it's so cool. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is at the end of my shopping mall, I'm going to have a, a row of these going across. And on either side, I'll have an up and a down. We're going to have a barrier going in between. Uh, there might be a gap in between, which would be quite cool. Uh, although I'll have a walkway in between it, and then of course, my, well, I've zoomed in too much now. No, no, here we go. Look, my railway line will then be able to sit here somehow. I don't know how I'm going to manage that, but then that the sits at the back, and then the punters will be able to come up the escalator, go for the thing, go on the train, and zoom off. Um, which is, um, yeah, wicked. I've got some other bits and pieces I'll show there. Um, this could actually come together. 
See, uh, this part, so this could come together quite quickly. It won't be a very long series of videos, and then it takes me freaking hours. Um, what do I need to do first? First of all, I need to make up these two sets of escalators I've gone. And then I need to work out, start working out the next bit. So I've, you've just seen me fiddle faddle and can't put them together. You don't need to see me can't put them together any more than that. Um, I'm going to put them together, stick them together, not peel the plastic off the outside of the acrylic. I think there's a protective coat of plastic on it, giving it its blue tint. And uh, which I'll, uh, they'll get, that will get taken off right at the last minute. And um, yeah. Stick escalators together first. I'll come back and see you when I've done that in a minute, and then I'm going to work out how the hell I'm going to do the rest of this model. But, very cool. What it's actually doing at the moment is becoming quite modular. Um, uh, although the railway track bits might not be. I'll have to work out how I'm going to stand them up and make them the right height and all the rest of it. Uh, but, escalators first. Here we go, look, check it out. Two sets of escalators. Now, what I haven't done so far is stuck the uh, uh, supports at the back in. I don't know why uh, they're going to be they need to be on there and I haven't stuck in these blue side panels. I put them in place because they needed to go in place to hold the escalators, the resin bits of escalator in place to make sure that everything fit together beautifully but apart from that they're absolutely top notch, tip top. Um, I've got to find, got to root through a one box. I've, I have the other thing I haven't applied yet. They even came with these kind of like natty laser cut bits of cardboard that look like these metal grids that will go at the base down here and at the top which is kind of neat as well to just give an extra bit of texture to the um the mdf which is really cool and they also they also came with uh planters like this which will go up the top on either side um don't know if we can see that out <coughs> Let's go this way. Shh. Well, put it on this one. Yeah, so they've got little planters that will go on the top. That I can have again have plants and things hanging down, which are really good. These are really good models. I can't believe that. Um, Sally Forth aren't, aren't making it anymore. Whoever or you know the the manufacturer of them isn't making them for Sally Forth. Because they're absolutely brilliant. Anybody doing any kind of modern kind of gaming, futuristic sci-fi, Stargrave, Star Wars, I mean, Christ, even Star Wars. I don't think I ever actually see people going downstairs in Star Wars. Certainly not on escalators. But, you know, Judge Dredd, Stargrave, any sci-fi game worth its sort, that's kind of, especially if it's clean sci-fi, you know. Uh, grim dark sci-fi doesn't need nice escalators like this but they do need escalators and stuff but I um, mean it's cleanish sci-fi Star Trek are there Star Trek games? I don't know fuck it but um, you know these are really brilliant models um, when properly assembled I have discovered that they are actually yeah they are a roof lower they're about five mils lower than the roofs of my my units they still look cool but um, what I'm very very tempted to do is to put it on a five millimeter foam core base um that will then lift it up about the right height uh and means that i can model stuff nicely under there um which is pretty cool i mean but i am going to i think um keep them as separate things because then they'll be extremely versatile models for my shopping mall um all i need to do is build a bridge unit and i can have a bridge with yeah they're just they're just brilliant so okay so that's escalators they're mostly made i'm going to put those to one side so the glue goes off um next thing i need to think about actually i need to get two bits of board out and work out how much space i'm going to need how much of these um uh, uh have units i'm going to need to use and then also think about the actual railway itself uh, the railway itself the, the tubes are going to have to be supported uh on the back side of the hab units um Zero clue how I'm going to do that yet. Maybe some junk modelling. Um, Pringles tubes sound favourites. I need somebody to eat a load of Pringles tubes for me. Somebody volunteer to eat a load of Pringles. Don't need the tubes, though. That would be freaking stupid. Oh, damn. Look at this. Right, OK. So, you know, I so said this might not take very long. This might not take very long. Although the detail is going to take a long time. And I've got to put a train track in over there. But <laughs> sometimes the gaming gods smile on you, right? Um, <clears throat> and what in this case 
my white boards that I bought to, bought to make my shopping wall out of, they are only, when I put three of these hab units down, they are only, what's that, well, less than an inch there, and uh, about, two inches there, about three inches le more in length than the three hab units. So, um, I could easily, easily, on this model, I either have three hab units together, just a dish, which is what I'm probably going to do uh, for my shopping mall, uh, for my, um, what's it called, my railway station, or if I wanted, I could move a hab unit over here like that, because uh, the other thing I'm tempted to do is move, I mean, move one over here like this, and then just build a bridging bit here, and it goes through. And then that's the underneath of the shop, underneath the railway train. Um, but either way, doing it this way, I've got, um, or I can have it over here like that, like that um, which is going to have escalators, escalators and a thing. Uh, and then there's a space around the end over here. Um, but I quite like having a, a gap through there. Or I could have that one run all the way onto there, like that. Forget what's in front of these a minute. I could turn this one round. I could jut out a bit like that. That would be way cool. And I'd have a thing go through there, a thing go through there, the railway line over there. Um, this is just going to be epic and, and really easy, easy to do. Um, and then I've got tall buildings that are going to go across one side. And this is going to be just one end of the shopping mall, which is absolutely fantastic um, can't, can't get over how good it is the other thing I've done is I've, I've gone to whilst in um, home base or wherever it was I also some of this stuff which is um, tile beading you know you put tiles in it's a nice edge but actually what this is going to do I think is make a I bought this because I quite like the idea of it being railings on the side or something that could stick on. Oh, the possibilities are endless. Um, but again, these are these are really cool because um, when you've got a, a, mem a dude stood against it, it's good size railing. Here, that's a terrible angle. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to attach those to these. Uh, some thought it was going to be required, but nevertheless, it's still working out real cool. So, um, what's next then? Next, there's going to be another bit of plastic slide across the small workshop. There it goes. Oh, sold. Next is actually to measure this bit over here and cut a bit of the railway line. I need to get on with the railway line. Um, it's going to run along the back here for my zooms. There's a lot of painting to do too. Um, but I need to leave these to dry. Take measure required. Okay, so look, I've cut my, my channel for my train to go in, um, and uh, I'm using, these are the joining bits for the gutter things, they're really cool, I've taken the clips off, but I'm probably going to have, I'm going to fix one of those at each end to kind of like show where the tunnel leaves the station. Um, I've got uh, an engine and then two uh, carriages. Um, <clears throat> I've got another engine going the other end, but it'll stick out the end of the table, so it's a bit pointless. And it's kind of interesting now because, of course, proper metro uh, design has gone quite a long way. You wouldn't get this kind of like um, join between cabinets, this old school railway join between uh, the the carriages. Now, in fact, you don't didn't when these were being designed. They're, they're, they're bendy bits in between, so. 
I am actually thinking of of uh, making a, a joiny sleeve that goes over that kind of thing. Um, although that means you've got less opportunity for characters to go through, jump through, I suppose. Now the next thing I've got to do is I've got to actually this is and this is all just sitting here wobbling in a minute, um, which is fine. What I've got to do, of course, is actually lift it so that the uh, the train sits kind of this high in the thing. Um, that of course means that it's because the passengers have got to be able to walk up to this and step straight into the train. Um, so it's going to need a bit of platform built into either side and it needs something that's going to support the anti-grav stuff. Let's just turn this upside down a minute. And my things fall out like the doors and stuff. And the underside of these carriages have got this kind of like thing here which has got a bit of an angle and a track which is 25 millimeters wide which uh, I'm su supposing is just <coughs> 25 millimeter white uh, 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 XPS, so it could sit on that like that. Actually, that's quite cool. Um, so I could make a central rail that would sit, so they could sit there, and then the central rail every now and then is going to need thing the gribblies um, along it, which are the bits that generate the, the magnetism to lift the actual thing off the thing, um, which is quite neat. I reckon I've probably had gribblies. Several people have sent me gribblies recently, kind of things I could stick on. So, from that point of view, I'm definitely going to use some 25 millimeter thick XPS foam. Uh, it's a good solid thing. And then what I need, to, I'm also going to need to do, of course, is build the track up so it's, it sits at the same height as roughly everything else. Um, but I think I'm going to do that after I've worked out how everything else is going to be exact heights of everything else. Uh, but right now. This is the part I need to be working on, which is the inside. So we're going to need to work out how high I want the thing to sit, because uh, it needs to sit there. So it's going to need to be, which is going to take a little bit of well, chicory pokery, I suppose. Um, All right, so I have taken my 25 millimeter XPS and I've cut out some bits like this. Uh, they're a bit crude actually, but they, they kind of work because it's just come up cement and um, stuck them in. Or oh, I will be sticking them in. I'm going to stick them in like this, uh, and then there's two end bits. I have to chop the knobbly end, the ends off, but they will sit nicely all the way down the middle. Thus, um, and uh, then. A train sit up on it like this, which is as it's supposed to, at the right kind of height for passengers to be able to get in and out. And now I've just got to do something about the gap. Mind uh, the gap. So we stick them right down the middle, and then going to work out the gap. And I'm going to put a strip, I think, of foam core along here, so there's. An edge of a platform on both sides. Um, I could, if I wanted to, make another one of these over the other side, but for the sake of this model for the moment, I'm just going to make one, um, and then at some point in the future, I might make another. Try to tunnel go the other way, shuttle sure trains go both ways, so I can have, maybe have a platform in between. But uh, for the, the sake of what we're doing, um, this is going to be absolutely fine. So yeah, so next mission then is to stick, is to finish off, neaten off the end there, stick the uh, rail, the monorail down the middle, um, decide what I'm going to use gribbly wise that makes the magnet, anti-magnet, magnet thing work. <laughs> Got that didn't you, yeah? Uh, what I meant there was the, uh, the repulsor lift thing. I've been sent, uh, I've got to sit this bunch of gribblies. There's some cool, cool things here. So I might use some of these. The uh, these 
um, what they call uh, lens lens covers. I might stick these in various places that might be generating the uh, uh, anti gravity field thing type malarkey. If I can find enough of the same, they're pretty cool. Um, something like that might be good on either side. Uh, it's ridiculous the stuff I get sent. Everybody who sends me cake, thank you very much. Um, but it, it, it could do something, it doesn't have to have anything there. I mean, it's a ridiculous extra level of detail, I don't really need to go to, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, so, first mission is stick down the uh, uh, rail, and that is going to have to be put to one side then. And then I'm going to uh, get on with the, the um, bases, I think, for the escalators and how they're going to work out with the top of the happy unit. Uh, and now I'm going to stick these trays together, spray them, paint them and stuff too. Ah. Coming on. Like I said, not a very complicated build so far. Well, ish. Okay, so I have uh, taken off the blue acrylic sides of my elevators escalators because they're going to have to be sprayed and what I've done is I've cut a um, piece of XPS foam, it's not XPS foam is it, a piece of foam board for each one which I'm going to stick to, just a simple rectangle of a foam board because it's 5mm foam board and that lifts up the air escalators to the perfect height to fit so figures can walk straight from one thing to another which is cool. So that was a nice simple fix, I'm going to put a cardboard trim around the bottom they both stick the staircases down, paint those up, um, and um, by the time I've done all that and undercoated my train, um, by the time that's all done, the uh, track hopefully will all be glued down, and then I can work on the platform um, side of it to work out how that's going to work. Oh, well, of course, I could in the meantime actually get a spare bit of this stuff and work out because I think I'm going to make 50 millimeter thick XPS foam pylons for it to stand on um, yeah that'll work kind of cool um, so yeah that's, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do we're going to cobble trim around here Stick this set of stairs down this one. Stick uh, this set of stairs with its legs down to this one. And I'm gonna stick down there like that, see? Uh, then I'm gonna undercoat those. And look to get those painted. But this is coming on. I mean, the, uh, the annoying thing is, is I want a lot of it to be kind of white or dirty white because it's going to be in this uh, shopping mall but this obviously all needs to be painted yeah so, and then that way there I can paint that and then put the acrylic sides in and peel off the plastic put the acrylic sides in I could put fill up the uh, planters and have some plants hanging over there it's kind of quite neat I'm a bit concerned that, yeah in the past I've always talked about the fact that a lot of my models end up get a bit dolls housey this one I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a certain amount of uh, architectural building of uh, here I am planning my new shopping mall um, but these escalators are just so pleased they look so cool they're really really neat um, so uh, um, yeah I'm into this let's get on with this let's do the next bit you know when some things when you're making models are supposed to happen this uh, is the uh, a happy unit obviously that's gonna have set stairs coming up to it. this is uh, the spare bit of guttering that I'm using from railway track and this it's 50 millimeter XPS foam. Now the cool thing is, is by the time I put 50 millimeter XPS foam underneath the railway track, the guttering, it's pretty much exactly the same height as uh, the roof of the hab unit. All I need to do is make cut out some 50 mil thick concrete. Concrete. XPS foam supports to go underneath the tube and um, that'll be it. Job flipping done. 
I don't need to support the whole thing. It'll be good in a couple of places to have gaps to go through. So, uh, from a gameplay point of view, it'll be quite good. So uh, this is my railways tube is 90 centimetres long. This piece is this is 50 mil XPS, um, and it's only um, 60 centimetres long, 62 centimetres long. So I'm going to basically, I think I'm going to do just one bit. That is the bottom of the. Can we see this? No, I can't read it. The bottom of the gutter is three inches wide, so don't need to do all that. So if I basically cut um, a two inch wide piece of 50 mil, oh shit, cut a piece. If I cut myself a 50 millimeter wide piece of 50 millimeter thick. XPS foam, I will get one long rectangle which I'll be able to cut into two or three bits, which will simply make uh, it can be glued to the underside of the track. And there it is, easy peasy. And even that, uh, all I, and then all I need to do because it's got the right texture from a paint point of view is seal it and paint it. Well, that's what we're going to do then. Um, yeah, all right. Let's get cuts of 50 mil SPS. Or we could go that way. How long is that? That's just under a foot. Hmm. <laughs> get the prox on out. This is the underside of my railway track. I've got four 50 millimeter blocks cut, which I'm literally going to just fucking stick. Um, I think one each end. And then two in the middle. There'll be enough room there. For the old character to pass underneath if they duck, just about. And then when they're stuck on, I'll um, go digging through the cack, 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 cack to um, uh, add some gribblies, some detail. Uh, one of them could have a little access door in and, and that kind of thing, and various other bits and pieces like that. But I think getting stuck on. Which says we'll think. Oh, unless I add the gribblies first and this stick one. That might also be a good idea. Um, oh, let's do that bit for him. Let's go dig it through the cack now and then go and um, stick things on there. Um, or the other way around. Oh, I don't know. Um, so doors are like little panels, stuff. It might be easier if I, I fiddle with the panels first, with the things first before sticking on, because then otherwise it's going to be a really, really big model to fiddle, fiddle around with. Yeah, do it that way. I'm going to dig through the cack now and then I'm going to stick things onto these things. Don't get too excited. Look at that. See how the plan changed straight away? And in the meantime, I'm going to go and spray something else in the garage. I've got to confess, this isn't really digging through the cat because these I've just got in boxes. Uh, you must have uh, heard, seen me bang on about these before. If you haven't, these are sprues from uh, Maelstrom's Edge. They are sci fi trim things. They're ace. They've got like. Uh, little panels and just bits and stuff and doors and little air fan vents and stuff and this is this is one set and then the other set is this sprue which has got like doors and windows and various other things on it too so I'm literally gonna um, jazz up some of these by adding uh, access panels and doors and various other things to it because yeah, frankly, this is this is just what this kind of thing is made for. This is just what it's made for. It's going to make, I mean, I could just have them as concrete blocks, but that would be a bit dull. So from that point of view, we're going to have some interesting things. Cutting tube stuck in here, you're going to have doors and access panels and stuff like that. Let's give it a go. Get out some clippers. Got some clippers. And let's just get clipping. So I don't know what I'm going to have first of all. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, look, look. Here we go. Look. Junction boxes and all kinds of things like that. Way cool. Um... It's really the sun's really knackering me today, but um, yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take these four little things, can work them out, stick some stuff on. It's gonna be neat. Hurrah! Got to use the right glue. PVA. All right. So I stuck a few bits on. Check it out. Look, look, there's a kind of thing there and a thingy thing there, and the rest of it's just gonna be painted concrete, and then have graffiti on it and stuff. But there's just enough bits. Spin it around. Want a rail section in there? I might add a few more bits there, which is kind of cool. Up here, I put the monorail in, which isn't really pretty, but it works. Um, carriages sit on it. 
Well, that's kind of cool. There's a gap between the carriage then and the uh, edge of the um, guttering. Uh, so what I've done so far is I've stuck in small pieces of foam core here, which is then going to have another bit of foam core stuck on top of it, which will come out most of the way to the, the, the carriage on either side. So the carriages will be a lot closer to... Um, yeah, to the platform and that will also bring this bit here if I put five mils here on top of that that will bring up to the height of the uh, roofs on the hab units as well which is kind of cool so this then goes over the back what we'll do on my table layout like that um, let's just I've just grabbed this this hab unit for the moment just gonna sit here like that as you can see there's that high difference there look so with foam, five mil foam core on that going out to there, that'll be perfect. And then the completely assembled escalators like this. Good progress being made. Okay, and this is how far I've got. This is where I'm gonna have to stop this time round. Um, because I want to get a video out and uh, I want to go and do a week's work in Cornwall being a pirate. Arr. But as you can see over here, uh, train tracks starting to be assembled. We've got the uh, 50 millimeter blocks holding up the train track. We've got the uh, monorail inside. I've got to build platform out here so it levels up there. I've got me two um, sets of escalators assembled paint sp um, spray this one's just got its acrylic siding just to show where they're going to go but they need to be painted first before I peel off the sides and stick them in um, like I just said this is um, the end of this video I, I don't like doing this to be quite honest I'm kind of like ending the project halfway through and I know in the past I've done videos that have gone a series of uh, videos to make one model but I'm not really a big fan of that but <laughs> I think by the time I'm already up to editing, I'm at about 55 minutes of this and nowhere near finished. Uh, I've got a whole load of stuff to do. Painting mostly and fanning around and, and adding details and bits and pieces. But this could be a really cool model. I've got lots of time to make a second part. So uh, please make sure you tune in for the second part of this uh, build. Um, I've got to stop now because um, I'm about to depart to... Cornwall for a week to go and do a load, whole load of pirate work, Arr, uh, kind of thing. It looks like this. Yes, I know, I'm a pirate. Uh, um, oh, if you want to see pirates in action, check out the uh, links below, the English Heritage links below. They're pretty cool. Two videos we made in March about how to be a pirate. Um, that's what I do for a living, it's great. Uh, uh, and uh, it was MCM Comic Con yesterday. Uh, this is me with my wife. And, um, um, oh, that guy in the middle, that's, uh, that's Boba Fett. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, at MCM, I spoke, I actually had the pleasure of meeting a number of you. Uh, so, first of all, Jim Bob, in this gear. Yeah, he's the one in the middle. Uh, hi, Jim Bob, nice to see you again. Uh, still haven't actually seen you face to face, just mask to mask. Uh, and I also met another guy called James, who pursued me across the uh, floor to take a photograph because he wanted to send it to his mate, I think on the other side of the Atlantic. Um, so it's lovely to meet people who watch this channel in other parts of the world. But I did say to both of those guys yesterday, uh, we'll be posting a video before uh, I disappeared off to Cornwall to go and be Henry Every in the year 1716. So um, I'm doing this now. So I hope you like the progress that I've made this far. Uh, I'd like to thank, first of all, uh, Moral Games for sponsoring this video. Um, not much of their product has actually appeared yet in this video, but I promise when we get to the point where we're uh, looking at the painted version of this at the end, there'll be a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, I, I'd like to thank Sally Ford for digging around in cupboards and finding me the missing parts that I, I was looking for. Um, who else would I like to thank? I'd like to thank my mum and dad. Jesus. No, forget those. Um, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for finding this channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. If you haven't liked and subscribed, do it now, do it now, do it now. Um, uh, and making comments down below. Let me know what you think, whether you're playing Just Dread, that kind of thing. What you think I'll be making next. Uh, and I love it, the fact you're going to watch the next episode. So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. This has been the Just Dread build. I've had a thoroughly good time so far. 
And I'm looking forward to the next one. There will be, well, there won't be too much of a delay. You won't notice a delay because it's normally two or three weeks between videos anyway. But for me, actually getting back into workshop is going to be at least 10 days or so before I can sit down and make any more of this, which is frustrating. Arr, 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 arr. But in the meantime, I will be drinking rum, shooting pistols and having sword fights. So it's not that frustrating, really. I'm going to go and be a pirate. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so where was I? Uh, yes, yes, so, oh yes, so, this has been a Judge Dread build. Thank you for watching, I'm Magnathia Builder Worlds, I'll see you next time. Arr. You know pirates didn't do that, don't you? You do know that, don't you? Pirates didn't go, arr. Well, some of the pirates would have gone, arr, if they come from Bristol and the West Country, which is where quite a few pirates would have come from, but actually pirates went, didn't go, arr, unless they were from that part of the world. Lots of pirates would have come from Scotland, the North East. Uh, quite a few pirates actually came from London. London was the biggest port in the world at the time. There would have been a lot of guys who were pirates who sounded a lot like me. Robert Newton went, arr, in the 1950s. But that is a little nugget of pirate myth-busting that I'll say for another day. Thanks for watching. See you again.